Devin Kennedy, ladies and gentlemen. New music coming out very soon. What can we expect? Yeah, it's uh, it's getting a little darker this year. We're getting a little more hyped up, a little more excited. Um, everything I did last year was very like chill and bright and summery and. Um, it's been like very interesting last year for me and uh, you know, creatively and just like personal life wise. I have a lot to write about, a lot of changes in my life. So it's uh, everything's getting a little bit darker, a little more interesting this year. Which I think is good, is basically what happens at this point in your life. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's just becoming an adult. You know, sometimes things get a little bit darker. Sometimes things, you know, yeah. the party starts to wind down, real life starts <laughs> to hit. And it's like. We were just talking about it, sitting in the studio grinding out those hours of writing. Yeah. Uh, that, that's a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort to get that into music yeah, out. Yeah, I think, like, you know, I, I spent a lot of time, like I said, writing the last year, and um, it, it kind of it put me in a very interesting headspace, like a lot of alone time, a lot of, you know, just closing myself into a room for days at a time and, you know, not seeing people because I need to finish this or finish that. And, um yeah, it's it's uh, just been a learning experience the last year, you know, like still you know, reminding myself like, ah, man, I really got to go see my parents or whatever. <laughs> you know, I really got to go see my friends or get out of here and, and not focus on music for a night or whatever. So it's uh, yeah, it's it's been a kind of an interesting adjustment, especially doing this you know full time for the last year and a half now since that started. It's been very you know overwhelming at times like, wow, I got a lot. I got a lot going on and a lot of people waiting you know, for music from me, you're waiting for this, waiting for that, so. It's always interesting to me here to hear what that process looks like for an artist. Mm -hmm. So when you're in that writing process, is that a time when you like to be alone? Do you like to have other people around you? What does that process look like for you? Writing? Yeah, I think I used to do like a, a lot more hundred percenters, I like to call them, just sitting down doing a full song in a full day. And my, my uh, quality level is just like, raising up every song I do is getting better and better and I'm starting to hit that point now where I really don't feel like I can achieve that on my own. Um, I'm doing all the, the production still so I'm still you know closing myself in and spending nights and nights on that but a lot of the writing is with other people and also it's just more fun. I'd rather just be with my friends and write the songs so that helps. I've made a lot of new friends doing that, a lot of new co-writes uh, and a lot of songs but um, there's still you know definitely a level of uh, like alone time to it as well. So it's been very interesting. Well, you're someone that's had music around you your entire life. I mean, growing up down in Hermosa Beach, correct? Mm -hmm. Or yeah. born in Her Hermosa Beach. Yeah, born in Hermosa. Um, talk to me about that because your family was pretty musical when you when you were born. Yeah, yeah. I um, grew up super musical family. Mainly my dad. Um, my dad was doing like a lot of film and TV commercial music. So I was kind of in and out of studios growing up and. Uh, meeting like a lot of collaborators, a lot of like mix engineers and super successful people in the film and TV world. Um, and that was kind of like how I met a lot of my first collaborators growing up and like people who would come down and work with me in Hermosa. And then now I work with moving up here to Hollywood. And um, yeah, it was really uh, a very musically enriched um, household growing up. My grandpa was a, a classical pianist. so. That was kind of, um, that was the other side of the family and just like very, um, very creative always. And that's how they always wanted it. Like I was never going to be an accountant or anything. I was always going to be doing something creative. Yeah. What know? was life like around the house? So like, was there music always playing around the house? Were you guys always collaborating around the house or was it more of, we do music at work. The house is kind of like, we'll put music aside. Uh, it was right in the house. I mean, the studio uh, is still in the house, right? So it was always around and I would say we were creating more than anything. I mean, we definitely listened and you know, would jam you know, Led Zeppelin in the car or whatever with my dad growing up and all that. But um, it was a lot of just, you know, tr trying things and, uh, you know, my dad recording my voice uh, when I was too young and now I'll never live it down because we have all the recordings of me singing Jingle Bells when I was <laughs> two years old, like all that stuff. Probably got, a, got on a microphone a little too early, but, <laughs> but yeah, it, it was always around and um, it was great. I mean, I... Uh, it's it's a lifelong passion. It's the only thing you know creatively that I that really matters to me. It's all I think about. So uh, it's the best way to grow up, in my opinion. Uh, you mentioned that your grandfather was a classically trained pianist, and your father was in the industry as well. Who was the first person that reached out to you about getting involved, or did you just always get involved in the music 
no matter who was talking to you about it. Anyway. Yeah, I think it was a lot of me reaching out to them and not hearing back in the beginning <laughs> and like uh, just trying to find people to work with. But um, like I said, like a lot of my first collaborators I met through family. Um, and uh, one producer in particular named Pat Reagan, who uh, did like Kiss and Deep Purple and some amazing artists, um, was helping my dad with another project and just happened to hear me sing or happened to hear something I had written on um, and offered to produce my band in high school. And that was when I was 14, maybe. And just from there, like, probably spent 300 hours in the studio with that guy, just like for over years producing albums for my band and I think that was what really like led to me getting accepted to Berkeley for for music and production and it's kind of like my first mentor uh, after my dad right so learned uh, a ton from him and he was kind of like like discovering me at that point you know really really saw something in me and inspired me to to sing for the first time, really, because I was playing drums growing up a lot. So. And when a producer of that stature gets in contact with you, how exactly did that go from you guys initially met, had the handshake, yeah. to him wanting to produce you guys? Because obviously he's very selective about who he would be producing. He's He yeah. has such a large resume. I think we found each other at the, the right time. Like He was kind of doing a lot of film and TV stuff and was trying to um, maybe find younger artists to work with and try to you know break into uh, rock and pop like mo more modern rock and pop and um, really seemed to enjoy the songs I was writing. I was always very melodic and he always said like he couldn't like he would go to sleep at night and hear the songs I was <laughs> writing in his head. I'm like, that's, oh, a, that's, that's a good thing. Like, yeah. <laughs> let me know. Let's keep working. So um, yeah, and I think we just found each other at the right time and uh, he taught me so much. I saw him a couple weeks ago. Still comes you know, over for, for Christmas and the whole thing. He's like my uncle, you know, so. Was that one of the moments where it really started to feel like this is something that you could do professionally? Um, yeah, yeah, I think, um, I mean, it was always, I, I think for middle school, you know, I, I played my first, like I played at a talent show, played drums in middle school. That was like my first show. And uh, walking off stage from there, I said, okay, like whatever that is, whatever capacity that it, like I do that in, I'm doing that forever. So it was kind of, always something I was focused on um, and it was super hard in the beginning because you're young and you know no one's ready to to help yet and uh, it just kind of became easier and easier over the years to build the team and get, put the, the right music out and decide to do it solo instead of the band like there were a bunch of different you know ways I attacked it over the years but yeah, so so you're a vocalist. You play the drums. We know you play guitar as well. How many instruments do you play? Um, I would say those are the main instruments. Uh, I uh, can play the piano. It's a kind of a disconnect for me, but I had to study it in college, so like you know, I, I can get by. Um, played the saxophone horribly in elementary school, but I'll still throw that on the list. I could probably get by playing the saxophone <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the computer, right? Producing. So, yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about how you got connected with James Maslow. Mm -hmm. So at which point, for those of you guys that are unfamiliar, um, James Maslow, formerly of Big Time Rush, which obviously a name that has a, a lot of uh, connection to it, but um, so when did you first get in contact with James and how did you guys decide that you wanted to start working together? We um, got connected through a mutual friend named Jordan who's in a band called Lovely the Band now. And uh, I was in a band with Jordan that kind of slowly fell apart Jordan started playing guitar for James, and then he moved on to uh, another gig and just referred me to James to play guitar for an acoustic show or something like that. And um, James and I just hit it off and um, really enjoyed traveling together and um, had a lot of great times just doing a couple like small promo shows for him in New York and stuff. And I was like 18, 19 at the time. And uh, then he got a call to play a couple iHeart things, got, you know, got things moving along a little more with his solo project and I just became kind of the go-to guy for guitar and helping him find, you know, we got him a drummer for some shows and help music direct and put everything together and that was kind of through college for me, like my my internship, if you could like, <laughs> or my job really, you know, just traveling around with him and playing some amazing shows and learning 
so much. And he was a couple of years older than you at that point? Uh, yeah, James is a few years older than me. Yeah. So when you, I guess he would still be a couple of years yeah. older than you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he um, doesn't age, but I yeah. do. Yeah, that's, that's how it seems. <laughs> um, so was he someone that you could sort of learn from as you're on the road? You know, having yeah. had that experience, he'd already gone on tour a couple of times. Yeah, I think it's like, like I was saying about Pat too, I met James at the perfect time for my career, not only from like a fan building perspective and, you know, able to, to help, like he helped me capitalize and, and get some of my first fans as a solo artist, but also just seeing how um, like a, a artist project operates. Cause I was just starting to do my own thing at that time and he was really helpful. And also just being there, like playing big shows and seeing how he walked up and he had his team and how he just attacked the whole situation or down to interviews, being there with him, like I'd never done any press for any of my music and just going to watch him do these things and how he talked about his music and, you know, talked about everything he was working on was uh, really, really special, you know. Now, for you as an artist that is, you know, just about barely hitting 20 years old, uh, to be playing in venues that are as large as this, what was that experience like for you? Were there a lot of nerves? Was it something that you just felt comfortable stepping into? How was that? It was pretty comfortable. We, we would rehearse so much, just like there was no worry of messing anything up or um, you know, there were there were no problems. It was all fun. I mean, we were playing just like the biggest shows, playing um, like iHeart in Vegas to twenty five thousand people. That's like the second show I played with James. You know, <laughs> so we're just like like you don't can't even really think about it at that point. You're just there and just doing it, and uh, it's like the the best show I've ever played. You know, it's trying to trying to get back to that at all times. <laughs> you know. <laughs> But, uh, and there's video of that. I yeah. mean, you can go back and watch your experience that you had yeah. of you playing there, standing on, uh, playing guitar, right. standing on the stage, or I believe KTLA you guys played at yeah. one point as well. Mm -hmm. A couple times. Um, do you ever go back and, and watch any of those projects and say I do and sometimes they get they get populated to me on YouTube too. They're like, "Hey, remember this?" I'm like, <laughs> I do. Let's watch it. Um, yeah, then that's always a good good time. I mean, it, it's uh I still still will do some stuff with him. He's a little uh, busier with some other projects right now, but uh, write with him all the time. Just just wrote on his uh, most recent um, single for his new band, and a lot of good things happening. He's you know best buddy. So uh, you just got back from being on tour uh, with James Maslow at the, at that point, yes. um, and you're looking to start building your solo career. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you go about first getting into that? Was it just a a matter of well, you're in a room by yourself. Let's start writing some music. Did it just it just cap it happen? Yeah, I think it was always in the plans. I had you know a couple bands that fell apart through uh, through college and um, as they do as they do. Yeah, I mean, and, and at a certain point, it was like, wow, I have done the band thing for you know five six years now. I haven't found the lineup. I don't think I'm ever gonna find the lineup. <laughs> so let's just do it myself. I felt like I was always you know like carrying a lot of the weight in those bands as well. So. Um, just thought it would be the right thing to do to, to do it under my own name. And um, like I said, I learned a lot from James and just kind of uh, in the beginning, just sat in the studio and pretty much wrote a whole EP myself. And that was, wrote two EPs myself actually, and, and put those out and um, ended up changing the sound and taking those down twice and kind of like <laughs> calling it like a rebrand. Uh, I feel like everybody goes through something like that right. too, you know, just like learning, like looking back on the song six months later and saying like, Wow, I'm a lot better now. I want to put different music out. And, yeah, um, and, and finding it, your sound in general pro has to be so, a process. So hard. I mean, it's ever changing. Like I said, like this new single is just going to sound a little bit different. And like, I don't really care anymore. Like the brand follows me. I make songs <laughs> that I like, and that's just what it is. You know, I write pop songs that Did I. Did anything surprise you about the process of writing by yourself and creating by yourself? Um, what surprises me is how I can look back year over year and, and see the quality level rising. Like that's really why, why I'm able to continue to do this. Cause if I felt like I wasn't getting better, I don't think I would be as interested in it. So I can look back at, at, you know, the, the first like Devin Kennedy songs that stayed up that I call like my first couple singles that, that, that was like the beginning of 2018. And I can, you know, listen to happy at coming out next month. And it's like the, the difference for me is, you know, huge. It's a totally different song. It's totally different music, but um, I think it all is still cohesive, and it's me, and I love all of it the same. You know, it's it's just like different stages of my writing and and my creative ability, and 
it's great to look back on, you know? Uh, so the song Happy Yes, um, talk to me about this process because, or, or not even the process as much as just diving into this particular song. What is it about this song that you think um, fans should be expecting? Yeah, so I, I wrote it in um, June of last year and uh, kind of struggled in the session initially. There's two other writers on it with me and we, we didn't really know what we wanted to write about yet. And when you're writing like a lot of songs, like I wrote th 300 songs in the last year, maybe like 250, something like that. And so it requires me to dig really, really deep into my personal life and find the things that I want to write about because it's like not really always a, a surface thing. I got to dig really deep to find it. And I think, um, you know, what this song is for me is uh, I let the uh, I let internet culture like dictate my life at times, and it's been really unhealthy to um, compare myself to other people. And and uh, like people are only putting the the positives of their life on social media, and that's all I see. And that's been really hard to you know think about like, well, why did they? You know, I'm doing I'm working so hard. Why don't I have that? Why didn't I get to do that? Why didn't I get invited to that? whatever. And um, that's definitely uh, hurt me and, and impacted my, my social life in a very negative way. And um, kind of just wanted to attack that and uh, be super honest about how it makes me feel. And kind of the only way I've been able to, to put that aside is just to realize that people are really only putting the positives of their life online and, and it's just not fair to compare yourself to that because they could have the, the worst thing happening and they're just not going to put that out there to you. So right. um, that's what it's about for me. It's super honest and, and a super special one for me. Yeah. Um, so this is a song that you wrote back last June or last summer. Mm -hmm. um, what does it feel like as a, a musician when you do have a song that you worked on so long ago and now it's the waiting process for yeah. it to come out? I mean, that's just, I, I think, how it is. I mean, uh, I spent a lot of time in the beginning of my project like playing catch up, like, ooh, I don't know what the next single is going to be. I better get writing. And, and now I'm, uh, I'm ahead of myself. I've got the next four singles finished, like in a folder, right? And that feels amazing. So <laughs> I'd rather just like listen to them for the next six months while they all drop. I think that's like a better, a better spot to be in. But it is interesting. I, I tend to uh, like drag my feet on songs that I think are really special. So like we wrote this in June and I was doing some release stuff. I was traveling. I was just had a lot going on. Um, and had a couple other singles coming out. So didn't really get around to finishing it until August, maybe. Um, and then it kind of just seemed like the obvious thing to put out in the beginning of this year. So, uh, you know, taking my time on it, making sure that it's done right. Like, there's really no rush for me on that side of things. I'm, you know, my own team, my own label, completely independent. Like, I can release this on my own plan, um, which I'm lucky to be able to do at this stage. So kind of just like finishing the songs that I love in the time frame that I want to finish them in. Devin Kennedy, thank you so much. You so I appreciate much, you coming into the studio. Appreciate Guys, it. all of his information is in the bio below, so be sure to go and check all of that out.